exciting. We're back. We're back. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. This is episode 21 of Audacity. This is the Velocity OKC show. I'm Nate Fisher. I'm the director of communications here at the lovely Greater Oklahoma City Chamber. And I'm Kaylee McDaniel, the senior marketing major. We're already doing better than the last time when we completely forgot to introduce, to introduce ourselves. ourselves. So that's it's right. looking up from here. And this is this is an exciting podcast for so many reasons. Number one, this is the first time that I remember that we've gone live. So right. cheers to that. Also, episode 21, it's like a 21st birthday party. Which cheers is, to that. We're drinking that. some Will and Wiley. That's right. You can see we've got Sonic coming up later. So basically, we're throwing a rager for Audacity. You're invited. We hope you enjoy it with this us. This is great. Yeah. And so this, if this is your first time seeing or hearing the podcast. We don't uh, always drink, but sometimes we do. Sometimes, sometimes we That's do. That's fair. But if this is your first time seeing this over Facebook Live and you're wondering what the heck is this, um, you can find our archived episodes at velocityokc.com slash audacity if you'd like to check that out. We've got all the subscription links for any of your preferred podcast platforms and including our YouTube channel, so be sure to check that out. So yeah, so welcome everyone. So what is it, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, as I already mentioned, we're going to have a little preview of the Sonic Hard Seltzer. This is the collab with Coop. They are hard to get, let me tell you. Two chamber members, they are hard to get, yes. So we're going to do a little taste test since the chances are if you haven't already bought a package of these, you may not get it for a while. So we'll just let you know what you're missing out on. That way you'll know what to go for when they come back. Right. And to be honest, we have not touched no. these yet. It has been hard for me to stay away from them, I'll be honest, but I have you know managed to to make it this far. Got picked these up yesterday. I got the last pack at the particular store that we went to. Yeah, so <laughs> this was very good. They're very, very popular. So we're also gonna talk a little bit. We have an exciting announcement about chamber events coming at the end. <laughs> so stick around. That's we a do big one. We haven't mentioned it publicly anywhere yet so do. that's something fun to look forward to that's gonna be great we also want to let you guys know a little bit about uh, some new development that's just been announced in automobile automobile alley that's very cool uh, we're going to talk about some of your new scooter options oh, that man. you may have Nate's around. Oh, favorite subject, fa- let me tell you. My ya. favorite, yeah. The scooters are <laughs> fantastic. Uh, the people that ride the scooters are very, very fantastic. <laughs> um, and also, a little bit about some uh, of a new thing that you can check out at Science Museum Oklahoma, Ooh. one of everyone's favorites. For wanna... the Sherlockian crew. That's uh-huh. right. That's exactly right. <laughs> and then maybe a little bit about some of the new food and beverage options that we've been able to experience here True. lately. Yeah. yeah. One thing I do want to start out with first is we did talk a little bit about bowling in our last episode, and I neglected to mention a chamber member, Heritage Lanes, which Shame on you. is the bowling alley, yeah. right? I think we mentioned all the other chamber members that had some sort of bowling component except for the bowling alley. So I want to give a shout out to Heritage Lanes because that was actually the last place that I had gone to before the pandemic to go bowling, and I think it was in late January of 2020. 2020 yeah. yeah. And so I remember I actually had a really good experience there. We had a lot of fun bowl a good bowling. Game. Well, the bowling game was okay. It was a little rusty, but okay, that's okay. I still need those like bumpers, so you probably <laughs> so wouldn't beat me. It's fine. <laughs> the bumpers, the bumpers can be kind of fun sometimes because you can see if you can aim some shots off of them. Oh, yeah. Like a trick if you want to do a little, yeah. If you want right. to get, you know, super. You super heard it from the pro people. Them, so. Trick shots at a bowling alley. But yeah. So. But Heritage Lanes was great. I wanted to give them a shout out because one thing I remember about that night specifically is I went into the bar area to get myself a drink. And we talked about last time how my drink of choice when I'm bowling is is actually a screwdriver. Right. And I was like, why a screwdriver? Right. That's well, so yeah, weird. Still don't. Yeah, I'm not really sure. It's not it's like you're powerful, there at 10 a.m., right? Vitamin C, you know, all, <laughs> all the nutrients that you get make you be able to just, you know, throw that rock as hard as you can. But okay. I'll anyway. take your word for it was in there getting a beverage and a large group of people came in and there was just one bartender and I just remember that he handled the thing completely professionally. It what was were very they like, well done. What was their bowling drink of choice? Well, it was a lot of super complicated drinks, which is not what you want to do at the bowling alley. I figured like, you know, really your go-to should be a pitcher of something. You sure. know, probably something a of beer. from Cooper Anthem, exactly. preferably, <laughs> or some other chamber member. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that would be good. But uh, yeah, so a lot of people were in there doing 
doing some super complicated drink orders, you know, <laughs> a half double vodka cranberry with the squeeze, the, the lime. squeeze of lime and maybe a little garnish with the mint. And maybe it was he like, was handling you know, it all very well and he was moving to people brush up through. on his skills, things he didn't make there all the time. Maybe I we could. could look at it as an educational opportunity. That's true. That's true. I just think that the most complicated drink that you should order when you're in a bowling alley is probably something with two ingredients. You know, probably. a screwdriver. Yeah, uh, Jack and Coke. Vodka tonic, Jack and Coke. Yeah, something like that. Keep but, it simple. But this dude was, uh, was was great. He was very professional. He was moving the drinks through. And uh, so good good job. Good. Sh- so I want to give them a shout out. Yeah. To Heritage Sounds Lanes like for no all your bowling No matter your drink needs. preference. He can handle it. He if can he's still it. working there, let's hope. That's so, right. So. That's right. Yeah. So that was that was very well done. So. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that you mentioned like the last thing you did since the pandemic started. Mm-hmm. I feel like we all have that moment where it was like, oh yeah, that was last time. Yeah. Like, Whatever. It really feels like the whole last year was just like sleepwalking through. I call it the lost year. Oh. Uh. It's just, uh, you know, a little Speaking bit Speaking of sleepwalking, I mean. too, yeah. you know, there's an urban legend about a bowling somnambulist. Have you heard about this? No, I've never even heard that word. Really? Teach me, Professor okay. Nate. Well, some somnambulist is basically a sleepwalker and that can go around and do, can, you know, it's sort of like when you hear about people that are on Ambien. Oh, sure. And how they can... I know somebody that like will tasks. get up and just like eat a bunch of food and then the right. kitchen will be completely exactly. So bowling somnambulist. So there's a, an urban legend about a guy that started to sleepwalk and he walked down to the bowling alley and he <laughs> started bowling and bowled an almost perfect game like while asleep. What? Yeah, I'm telling you. And, and it was so impressive to all the bowling staff that they tried to get him to join a league. <laughs> But, but it could only course, be at night. Well, it could only, yeah. And it, <laughs> but it didn't really work. They couldn't get him to like do anything other than just bowl. So he couldn't actually sign up and sign his name or anything. Well, but, uh, darn it. I think, I think he went and had a celebratory drink or two at the at the bowling alley sure. bar, and then he should have gone to Heritage. You know, walked back, walked back to his domicile, and went back, went back to sleep. And so, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. talk so about a bad Got to right watch there. out for those uh, somnambulists, but um, for sure. But yeah, so okay. I think... Is it time to give the people what, what they want? The Sonic drinks. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. So, so we have to say we're drinking the... Right now. Pink, Will and Wiley... Right. Cherry Limeade. So, right. That's correct. And we're going to start with the Sonic Cherry Limeade so we can do a good compare contrast. A little bit of and a I'm compare contrast. I'm going to have to chug this a little bit. I'm sorry, Mom. And thank you, Perrin. Perrin Duncan is girl, Perrin shoveling Duncan. us some of, uh, uh, some of these beverages here. Mm. But, okay. Yeah, and so Coop... They make the Will and Wiley seltzers very, very popular. Um, we were among the first to try That's Will right. and Wiley seltzer when we did the podcast shoot at Coop Ale Works. That's right. that, that again, was, that was just before the pandemic exactly, started. Exactly, 18 months ago yeah. at this point, maybe. So uh, definitely, what we have been pleased with them since then. Absolutely, and I've been I heard right them. before we started filming that this is the best-selling flavor, and then mm-hmm. they kind of took a different twist on it with a the little bit different for the cherry Sonic. limeade so, so yeah so let's just I'm really excited let's just test this out here and see what I this think is we like. have to say too like when Nate said he got the last one that that was at on cue I mean all of the liquor stores are sold out right like, the homelands <laughs> are sold out so these are not easy to come by these at this are moment. big hits I had yeah. to beg someone for an ocean water can I got one can that's it because <laughs> that's my favorite Sonic drink so right. We were able to, able to procure a uh, a twelve pack of the citrus right. flavor. Right. So there's also yeah. the uh, tropical, tropical variety right. pack, um, and I think they do sell some of the flavors in their own right. packaging. Yes, that's that's true. Okay, so and if you're wondering about the color, this does have oh. a slightly um, pink t- tinge, right? Yeah, so it, it sort does. of looks like a cherry limeade, I guess, because the the Will and Wiley version is pretty clear. So what do you, uh, you know, and I'm... Okay, my first impression is it's a little more floral. I'm getting some, I yeah. But it, it has no, I think that's a, right. I was going to say, you know, you get a little bit more cherry on the you're nose. You're doing this but then all properly. I'm like, trying, I, you know, I'm hmm. trying to, you know, trying to... Sommelier, just, you know. Uh, sonicalier. No, that's not a word. I love it. You know, we've talked, about, when we've done taste tests for the new Sonic slushes on this show before... Yeah, we paired them. We paired them with different right. Sonic items. And I remember us making the comment that whenever you see someone sort of with a sonic cup that's a little out of context you, you just know, automatically assume there. that there's alcohol in there yeah so Honestly, now, it's a perfect kind of drink. Come full circle yeah that's right this. they're just saving us the trouble instead of throwing vodka in a cherry limeade you just get a seltzer 
this I is like pretty this. good, but yeah, yeah. The, there's a little bit of mint in there, I think, and sort of the back end. Are you getting that? Is that maybe where you're getting the floral notes from? Perhaps. I can't really say. Not Your sure. uh, palate might be a little it's more sophisticated a, but yeah, than mine. It's nice and sweet. I like this. So what, I mean, what immediately comes to mind as far as pairing this for me okay. is going to be the, uh, just a supersonic cheeseburger, I okay. think. Okay, yeah. You know, I think the, I don't know, kind of the umami of the cheese the is sort umami. of going to balance out a little bit of the sweetness and the saltiness that you're, mm -hmm. you know, from the patty that's going to balance out of the sweetness that you're getting here. I'm not sure. You know, sure. what I would pair with everything is just like mozzarella sticks because that's what I always get. Yes. <laughs> Every time that I works get too. mozzarella sticks. Yeah, I like this. I love their though. mozzarella sticks. But this is pretty good. I, I I have to say, I'm enjoying this. Now I I, I still like the I think the I like the Sonic too. one. You like the if Sonic I, if one? If I had to choose, yeah. which I couldn't, obviously. One but like, and if one B or to, one A one, yeah. I think it would be this. I, okay. I really enjoy the I don't know. Something about it really speaks to me. Yeah? Yeah. It's good. It it does it, it but yeah, it's a little like Mint and yeah, kind of a clean finish. I it would say it does have a very clean finish. Okay, so what what do you want to try next? Um, let's do just the classic limeade. Classic See. limeade. Okay. I can't switching this. gears a little bit. <laughs> Perrin's. Thank you, Perrin. No we appreciate problem. that. And here's a good look at the <clears throat> sonic limeade. The frontage of the can. Yeah. So. This is going to be great, so... I got to give a, sh a shout out to Brahms, because when I was little, I would always go there for their cherry wine. Oh. Those are pretty good, too. Yeah, those are good. Another chamber another, member. And another Oklahoma... Another you know, Oklahoma food company. Food establishment. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to be more like Nate, you guys. See? I can't smell anything. <laughs> <laughs> My allergies are really acting up, so this is pointless. <laughs> Who knows? This one... So this poured a little bit more clear. It does have a maybe a slight green tinge to it. But I mean, we it is very, have very these slight. We probably should drink out of black coffee. Though. Well, that's because I can't. <laughs> I was tell. trying to do the think about the David Letterman sort of approach. You know, plus <laughs> okay. we don't want these getting warm. These are best served cold, I'm sure. Um, let's see. Okay. I taste the lime, but what else is in there that I yeah. taste? Nate, tell me. Hmm. It sort of has a little. I don't know, like a buttery finish to me. It's like is we're that, describing Chardonnay. That, I don't that, know. Well, no, I'm serious. And, and that would make me think that this would actually pair well with something like um, the chicken, the crispy chicken tender dinner. Okay. You know, something along those lines. I was thinking of something on Texas toast. Mm, yeah. Is that, is well, that far too Yeah. Far off? No, they I think Texas that's, toast there, well, they right? used to, see, I think they used to have the chicken strip basket, which I believe mm. was essentially chicken, fried chicken tenders with some Texas toast mm. and, and some fries. That there would actually, th that would, that would, that would be a pretty this. combo with this. I, that, yeah, that'd be good. I'm gonna I like say I, I I like it too. Um, this is a, maybe a little bit more sophisticated, it perhaps. Tastes, than is, the, is it is it right to say that this tastes a little bit more dry than the other one? Yeah, I'd say I think that's right. Yeah, Look, it's I not quite as sweet. Yeah, that's it's a good not call. Quite as sweet. That's a good pickup. I like that. That's very good. Okay, all right. So what do you want to try next? Um, <laughs> let's do what? What are the other citrus options? Is it lemonade? Uh, we have a lemonade, oh. yes, and oh, then we have, have a lemon lemonade berry. Story. Let's let's do the lemonade. Let's do lemonade, and then we'll save the ocean water for last. I will let I know you know. You, I know that's yeah, your, I'm, the I'm one that you're I'm super excited about to. ocean water. Thank you. Karen. I hate lemonade. Do you know this about me? I, I don't. Okay, I, I you really hate do. lemonade. I do hate lemonade. I had a terrible experience. I'm going to share on the podcast. Um, I <laughs> when I was in college, I got a stomach bug one time. But before I knew I got a stomach bug, I went to Taco Bueno. And okay. I wanted to get a really big, large, unsweet tea with sweet and low in it. So I put the sweet and low in. I went to go get the tea. There was no tea. There was no tea. And I couldn't wait. So I was like, I'll just do lemonade. So I filled it up. It was like so sickly sweet. That was on me. I made a mistake. I should have poured it out. And then I went home and proceeded to throw up for like 24 hours. <laughs> and I've never liked lemonade since then. So I'm doing this for you, for oh, Audacity. Well, thank you. For uh, Coop and Sonic. So, so just dedicated to you guys. No pressure. Okay. So you made... Lemonade out of super super sweet lemonade. No tea lemons, and it didn't work out. <laughs> it for it you. was terrible. You, you went from from lemons I went, it was to lemons. normal lemonade with extra extra sweetener, right. and it was terrible. This is much better. Much than better. That. Yeah. This has a lot more fruit on the nose, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit sweeter on it the nose. It is a little bit sweeter, but not overly but it, so. It's not overly so, and it doesn't actually 
taste as sweet as it smells, which is kind of a combo that I like. Yeah. I like to kind of have a little bit more, a um, little bit more sweetness. I actually prefer this coming to the in limeade. than on the finish. Honestly, yeah, I think I, like I do this. too. I, I like this a lot. Yeah, this I don't is think it's good. as good to me as the cherry limeade, but it's it's mm -hmm. a little I, better than the limeade in my personal opinion. For me, corn dog with mustard. Mm. That's got to be what you're gonna go with. Okay. With this. Okay. I don't know what I don't know about you, but something about the fry. I think the breading. Yeah. What's something the name about of the those breading. Little bitty when, chicken. Poppers? Little chicken poppers? Oh, uh -huh. I like mm -hmm. those. Okay. Basically, I like everything from the snack section of their menu. So. <laughs> right. It's pretty good. Okay. All right, we've got All right, so now we've got two more. Yeah. Right? This is okay, the so lemonberry, we're going to do lemonberry now. That's yeah. correct. Now, uh, I would want to <laughs> invite the members of our production crew, Perrin, Josh, Tr Josh, Tracy, you know, you guys, please feel free to... Uh, have at some of the, some of these too. This is for this is for everyone. Oh, yeah. Friggin thank you. Yes, pass them along. Let's say we're gonna make this a fun happy hour at the chamber after this wrap. So, lemon berry. Lemon berry. And this is pouring pretty clear as well. Just want to let everyone know. Everyone. You know. I love this. This is like a wine tasting with Nate. Except it's seltzers. Makes me laugh. Oh. oh. Mm. That berry, Mixed berry comes yeah, through. a little bit of Strong. more strawberry here, I think. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and uh, I don't know, a little raspberry. I was gonna say yeah, I taste too. more raspberry. I think. Okay. It reminds. This is gonna sound crazy. It's a little sharper at the beginning. This might be lost on you, as a man, but this reminds me of the best parts of putting on a Smackers lip balm. That's my official review. I Best can't, part of putting I on a smacker. I cannot relate to that. I, I, mean, I would. I'm gonna I, I will be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. I mean, 12 year old Kaylee thought they were awesome. <laughs> so. This is actually very well rounded. Mm -hmm. um, it, this is just about my kind of preferred level of sweetness. I would. I would say. Yeah. Because it is a little bit sweeter. Mm -hmm. But not overly so. It's not cloyingly so. Right. I like this. That's I like this. And then, and then there's our boss. There's our boss. It's Cynthia, okay. We're do just you, drinking it on the job. Do you want to try some Sonic Seltzers? So what do you think? What do you think about this one? Mm, it's good. I like the berry flavors. Mm -hmm. It's very summery. This is a good, this is a good pool selection. You yeah. Hang out by the pool. Bring your lemon berry seltzer with it, you. It's, it's sweet. So I would want to kind of, um, counterpoint this, maybe okay. counter program with this with something on the savory side. Um, what about? So tots, okay. for sure. Yes. Just a, like a side of tots. Poppers with oh. the, like, spice mm, yeah, that's this? a really good idea. Yeah, Just throwing that that's out there. a good call. In keeping with my that's a good call. Thing. I like that. Yeah. So some maybe some jalapeno poppers with this. Yeah. But I would I don't know. Thus far, I would call this the sweetest of the. Of oh, the, yeah. The this had. is for sure the sweetest. Okay. And I I prefer it. Like, I, I, I kind of like yeah. a little bit of a sweeter. Right. Seltzer. I mean, if you're going to have a hard seltzer. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, you want it to maybe be. Especially if, you, if it's your first go. That's right. <laughs> now, the next one. OK. Ocean water. I'm the most excited about, but I feel like there's also the most on the line. Like, what if I don't like it? This, yeah, it's, it's like meeting water. your heroes, exactly. meeting your childhood heroes. Ocean water is my absolute favorite no. drink Thank at you, Sonic Perrin. forever. Ocean water forever. And if it's blue, I'm gonna be so excited. <laughs> I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see. The best part of the ocean water is like it is it is that it is that color. And no. blue can taste like anything. Oops. It looks very clear it's to me. Pouring pretty clear. I'm gonna give you a little extra oh there. Gosh, so you thank can. you. I'm gonna really take my time to. And I wanna, I wanna, I'm gonna. Hey. I wanted to clear smell, my. We should have some palate clearing devices, you know. That's if we were doing this. I smell coconut. And uh, that is the product. Oh. So good. I'm so excited. I'm, ter I'm terrified. Let's go at the same time. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. It's so okay. smooth. The nose is very, um, it's a little berry and a lot of banana boat. <laughs> yeah. 
but then when you taste it, I think on the tongue, it's a little bit more the reverse. It's a little bit more coconut. Yeah, I, I mean, it's very, that's what my friend who gave me this one can of ocean water said is that it's very okay. coconutty. Yeah. And I like coconut, so yeah. yeah, I like this. But then, yeah, it, but then you get a nice like round mouth feel at the end because of the sweetness that really kind of comes in. Yeah. Well, I'm serious. Yeah, I just, I don't know. <laughs> so it's, uh, yes, the mouth feel, Nate, it's wonderful. Okay, so I, Foot long chi chili cheese cone. Oh dang! I'm thinking. Okay. I'm thinking that. I mean that that almost goes with anything, frankly. It's just foot it's long chili cheese cone. Yeah. I mean I'll, I'll yeah I'll, I'll always eat a tube steak. I think this stands on its own. This. I don't need to pair with anything because this is awesome. <laughs> it's my favorite. I mean I am a big Ocean Water fan, but this 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 also lives think up to the name. The supersonic breakfast burrito. Mm. You know, you get the sausage, you get a little bit the the, the you know the spice from yeah. the little jalapenos that they have. I think that would actually kind of balance out the the coconut yeah. and the sweetness here. I think that's good. Nice, nice, again, a nice round round mouthfeel. Coconut is one of the things from the plant family that you can get a lot of umami from. Oh, okay. And so how do you have um, time to know all this what? stuff? Like, <laughs> what? I don't get it. <laughs> You're like the busiest person I know. <laughs> And here you are talking about umami and mouthfeel. I, I need to be better. <laughs> this is just inspired me. I mean, I, I'm a craft beer fan, so I've been trained to sort of mm. appreciate my beverages. That's true. And, it's all uh, that time on untapped. All yes, that time exactly. Logging, on logging, on, logging all those beers on untapped. So, who? Sonic? This is great. Great job. I mean, I, I don't know. What, what? So what's your favorite? Then, I'm going to go with Ocean Water. Ocean Water is your favorite? You know, it's a, a childhood, like, nostalgia that leads to that, but also genuinely enjoy the taste. I could find myself drinking it all throughout the summer, so I like it. Okay. What about you? I'm going to go with the mixed berry, I think, is my oh, favorite. Okay, the Ocean okay. Water is Lemon a close berry, is second, though. Yeah. Yeah. Element. And then, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, it's hard to put the good. others in sort of an order. Yeah. I would kind of, I mean, they're all very, very close. None of them are bad, yeah. obviously. Just depending on your personal taste. Just depending taste. on your yeah. personal taste and kind of what you're after. Yeah, and what you want to uh, pair it with. Yeah, tides this over until <laughs> people can get their hands on it. I uh, <laughs> learned that, I guess, in other states, they won't be available until August. Is that correct? I think that's correct. So Oklahoma yeah. has so exclusive access right now bad. to the Sonic Coop Seltzer. So right. please pick them up wherever you, you can find them. I mean... I've really enjoyed them. They're really good. So they are really fun. good. Coop, Sonic, great job. Cheers to you guys. Chamber members, very we nice. appreciate your support and your beverages. That's right, that's right. No complaints here. That's right, okay. So now that we've, you know, sufficiently hydrated, uh -huh. what else is going on in Oklahoma City <laughs> we want to talk about? Well, we wanted to let you know about a cool project that was just announced uh, yesterday, and we've got a good story about it on VelocityOKC.com today on the new redevelopment that was just announced in Automob Automobile Alley called the yes. Nova. Yes, it so my, awesome. my my boy Brandon Lodge, he keeps doing great, great things. I want to get him set up for a Q&A on Velocity one of these days. Ooh, Brandon, if you're Brandon. seeing this, yeah. hopefully you're, we'll be able to do listening. that. But, but yeah, so this is very cool. But they are basically redeveloping three different buildings. Um, you know where the Stowe's office furniture mm -hmm, yes. building is? Uh -huh. Okay, so that it was actually originally a uh, Chevrolet dealership. Cool. So tying into the Automobile Alley theme. And so they actually have put together a project where they have frontage on both 6th and 7th streets. Ah, and so they're awesome. going to essentially combine three different buildings into one development. And there's going to be a cool kind of spine thing that they're going to develop that connects the two across the two blocks. Yeah. And so, but it's going to be a new grocery store that's going to be anchored by Urban Agrarian. Right. So I know that everybody uh, knows about Urban Agrarian and all the things that they do. So they've got a location in the farmer's market, yes. of course, and uh -huh. then also one in uh, Edmond as well now. And but there's going to be it's totally going to be it is that live work play sort of mm -hmm. you know so there's going to be an apartment component I want to say 20 different apartments and nice. those look really nice and uh, some office space and it looks really really cool and that's so awesome. that's going to be a cool development so if you want some details on that and to see some renderings um, you can check that out on velocityokc.com to learn a little bit more about uh, what's going on there but yeah, yeah. that is awesome I, w I read the headlines this morning and thought another great addition for a grocery you know provider here in downtown yeah. Oklahoma City and Urban Agrarian I've been to the farmers market location several times they have great selections and it's mm -hmm. always fun to be able to buy things from local producers so right. Right, right. It's good for so, everybody involved. Lots of good, yeah. Wade Scaramucci's the uh, lead architect mm -hmm. on the project as well, and so you know he's done a lot of really cool f projects around town um, that uh, uh, that you will no doubt be familiar with. So that is that's very cool. So we want to let you guys know about that. 
Uh, there's also, we've mentioned the scooters before, so there's a new <laughs> scooter company in town. Tell me more about how you feel about scooters. It's called, the, the name of the company is called Hellbiz. So Hellbiz <laughs> Scooters, which pretty much sums up my feelings toward old scooter business. I think at some point, the, the plan is for Oklahoma City's economy to become sort of 95% scooter That's right. driven. We're a scooter based economy. So we're just, yeah, we're just gonna drive scooters around all the time, and then we're going to pay for those rides by picking them up and charging them, and then we'll have more money for new, more new rides. So and answer a question for me. Did you or did you not own did you not spend your own personal money on a scooter? I did. This is the thing. I Yeah, I am not anti-scooter. Yeah. I, I think I'm more anti-scooter people, like the people that ride the Whoa. scooters inappropriately. That includes That's, Tracy Hayes, who I, I sometimes know. drives past me and tries to Tra give me to ride on the back of her scooter while she's riding on it in downtown Tracy, Oklahoma City. I think Tracy has a see scooter rule, so if she sees a scooter, she just takes a ride. <laughs> she's going to take a ride. I've um, never ridden on one. Not once. You haven't? I'm terrified well, of them. Yeah, actually, the, yeah, I did buy one before Bird actually started dropping theirs here in Oklahoma City because I thought, well, this is actually a really great way to get around. That's right. You're a of, downtown commuter. You yeah. walk to work every day. Right, right. So some, you know, some days maybe you're in a hurry. In the summers, it's very Sweet. easy to get... <laughs> Yeah, I know. Way to work, even at you know eight thirty in the morning. It, that that you can, yeah. you know, that can happen it's if you're humid if you're around here. It's humid, yeah, and so so I, yeah, I thought, and, and you know, I'm seeing some people riding on the sidewalks here right now, which is not what you're supposed to do. I think that's, that's sort true. of my main. Since I am a downtown are, denizen and, and citizen, you are a rule follower. And I'm to a the rule extreme. follower. That is so, true. That's part of it. That too. is true. So if you're, you're like, if you're if you're using the, the rules, scooters, everyone. I know what I appreciate about the Lime scooters is that they do make you say I will not ride on the sidewalk probably four or five times oh, okay. now despite that that is predominantly where people want to ride the scooters yes. and that is actually not very safe <laughs> so, if you guys my favorite is when I see a bunch of people riding the scooters on a sidewalk right next to a bike lane yeah it's like, like there's a bike lane right there yeah like, that's true that's a little bit I don't know you know it's a little bit I dangerous I know all of the nuances of it like I said I've never ridden one don't plan on it I mean I would have to bring like full safety <laughs> gear I'd have to put on a helmet then I'd just be a nerd yeah. so it's like better if I just walk with my feet but they are said, fun. Tracy Tracy's a big fan she does yeah. try to entice me to I would just say if you are going to ride a scooter just uh please do it properly and ride when safely. you ride safely and then when you uh, <laughs> check it back in don't leave it in the middle of the sidewalk um, now I don't do this but I have seen people other downtown residents tossing them over when they are left in the middle of the sidewalk Yikes. where they're not supposed to be. So you're actually supposed to put those in between the sidewalk and the street and okay. sort of that street furniture area. So that's where street you're supposed to leave area. Them. I learned a new Keep them out of, this, out of the sidewalks. That's true. Uh, but yeah, so there's a new, lots of new scooters Look around. for Helbas on a there's, sidewalk near you. Helbas are a line. There are Helbiz. plenty of those around, yeah. It's a very that's, aggressive name, but. It is, you know, I, I'm great. not, yeah. I mean, you know, that's. Good for them. That's fine, yeah, so. <laughs> Okay, so Science Museum, Oklahoma. Yes, we alluded to this at the beginning. We did. Sherlock Holmes exhibit. That's Tell right. Tell a little bit more about it. I have to say, first of all, I am a big Sherlock Holmes fan. I okay. love the BBC series with yes. Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman. In fact, I was actually able to eat at the Speedy's Cafe when oh, I was in London a few exciting. years ago. That's awesome. Yeah, that they use for the exteriors. This is not actually on 221B Street, which is a completely different, completely <laughs> different area of town and looks different. <laughs> Oh, we got some more scooter people there right go. by. There they were. Hey, they heard us talking about them, yes. <laughs> but they're in the street, so that's okay. That's all right. Yeah, they're, that's, they're, they're doing that properly. Abiding. And look, abiding there's them. Rick from Rick's Snack Shack. So <laughs> shout out to our sponsor, Rick's Snack Shack. That's right. Um, he needs to start stocking some uh, Sonic Seltzer. Yeah. <laughs> so Science Museum, that's right. That would, that would actually, if you, yeah. If Rick wanted to bump like up sales cakes. of, uh, yeah, of, you know, volume, <laughs> Uh, at Rick's Snack Shack, that would probably do it. That would probably not be good for productivity. And, and uh, we could just have like know, a sure. happy hour hours only on that from four to five. That's true. That's true. That that could I be work. a good idea. But yeah, Science Museum Oklahoma, they've got a new Sherlock Holmes exhibit, which they have a lot of really cool stuff. So they've got a lot of cool stuff that has to do with sort of just Sherlock fandom in general. Oh. But they have a lot of neat exhibits about sort of you know 
the way that you would do science if you were in sort of the late 19th century, which is sort of the original you know, time period that uh, Sherlock Holmes was set from the original Sir Arthur Conan Doyle novels mm, yeah. um, that I, I, I have to say I've read those and love. I do love them. Love they awesome. are great. Yeah. So I'm a little bit of a Sherlock nut. So uh, it just seemed like a really, and we're actually going to have a piece on velocity and with a little bit more detail about that, that uh, Perrin has generously <laughs> <laughs> volunteered to write for us. So Go, be on the lookout for that within the next couple weeks. But yeah, get out to uh, Science Museum of Oklahoma, you know, yell in the echo tube if you want. That's right. Do the shadow yeah. wall. I love that and, shadow uh, wall. The Sherlock Holmes ex exhibit it actually takes a separate ticket, but I, from what I have seen, it's actually going to be well worth it yeah. for some of the experiences no, I'm that you sure get check to do. Out. That's so awesome. There's some mysteries you can solve, <gasps> and you know, you can see how. I think a lot of people think that Sherlock Holmes actually, you know, uses a deductive method, mm. but it's actually more of an inductive method. Okay. So you can maybe figure out the difference between the, the inductive and the deductive reasoning. You know, yeah. inductive is when you're trying to see how different sort of data points, how you can connect them in a pattern that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so that's actually what uh, Sherlock Holmes seems to be doing most of the time, very is more cool. inductive reasoning. So yeah. It's exciting. It's very good. So, okay, so that's that. So yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the, you know, things are opening up a little bit yes. more. Yes. Which yeah. is nice to see. And I feel like we're back in the game. We're back in the game, yeah. And again, we want to point out, we're sitting this close because A, we are outside. We're and B, we're friends. both. <laughs> Fully vaccinated. We're fully vaccinated. Or whatever, in case you're one of those in case you're one of those that are worried about that sort of thing. We are both fully vaccinated. So and according to the no CDC, shaming here. we do not have to wear masks to be around each other. That's so right. sure. It's fine. And no we're matter outside. what. And we're outside, yeah. So <laughs> Um, so I know that I have uh, had a couple of experiences. Um, we actually went to Jimmy B's last weekend oh, for the first okay. time, How Chamber Member Jimmy B's, and sat around on the patio with some friends, and man, it was great. Great service, great food, just had a, uh, we were actually able to, well, kind of happenstance, but they were pretty busy, so yeah. we ended up eating a little bit on the late side, but they had their late night menu going, and so they had some uh, some different deals happening, That's and cool. uh, they had a, a beer and shot special, and uh, yeah, so it was Nate always very good. a really good, good time, is what I'm hearing. It was a lot of fun. Had the steak free. Summer had fun I have a little you. bit of a, I have a little bit of a steak free rule, kind of like oh. the scooter rule. If I see, you know, you steak, steak free on the free, menu, you get I'm it? like, yeah, I'm gonna enjoy that. And it like was, the cinnamon roll rule? It was very good, uh, yeah, close okay. to the cinnamon roll rule, that's correct. And so, uh, had a really good experience there. Um, we've also been to Parlor recently, oh, yeah. Chamber Member Parlor. They've I actually I opened haven't a been new, to Parlor since before the pandemic. You gotta so check gotta that out. Back. They've actually expanded their outdoor space. So, if, if you don't feel like going inside, they have, have a few more outside options options that are really cool and they've got a new kitchen there Ray's chicken kitchen okay and so we're actually gonna have a story about that on velocity Ooh, that exciting. hits tomorrow so be on the lookout for that um, but uh, had a really good experience there too so um, have you had any I have that you, yeah? um, so for my birthday weekend last weekend I went to brunch at Bradford house oh nice. which was so magical yeah and lovely the food is amazing the atmosphere I mean the the restoration of that place is uh -huh. so incredible and we saw it um, um, at a table where they had found some old like postcards and envelopes from the original owners whose last name was Bradford but mm -hmm. they had those kind of displayed on the wall it, it was done in a way that's beautiful and modern but also definitely paying its respect to the origins of the house um, which was a lot of fun love that I also spent some time in Edmond which I don't often get that far north but I went to Frenzy Brewing oh nice how there. was that it was really fun they okay. have live music every weekend um, the downtown Edmond area is a, a really fun place to get out and explore it's very walkable yeah indeed um, so there were a lot of great little restaurants to visit and also stopped in Commonplace Books in Edmond. So that was kind of my birthday weekend outings, which were very enjoyable. Shout out to our friend Jennifer Seedon at Visit right. Edmond. I think we have a great Veloc uh, Velocity OKC article about things you can do in Edmond we do. that we posted a few months back. So we, we do, we do. And we actually have a nice piece on the Bradford house as mm. well that uh, we'll link to in the show notes. So you guys be sure to check that out. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, I also wanted to mention this. I saw this today. They're not a chamber member, but Taco Bell is re-releasing oh, no. their naked chicken chalupa. No, no, no. Do you know about this? Is that this? that weird thing that was just like meat that you that's wrapped around other things? The shell is fried chicken. I don't, got, I don't know. Think I, about I this. this. The shell <laughs> is fried chicken. It's incredible. I mean, you think that they really figured it all out with how they made the shell out of the Doritos, right? That's true. No. But this is 
10 steps further. Do you it like is it? incredible. I can't oh, tell. It's amazing. The mania that you're giving no. up right now. I can't tell if you like it or hate it. I was, I was, uh, Oklahoma City is actually a test market for a lot of Taco Bell art items. I did not know that. Yeah, so if you see something new and funky on the Taco Bell menu that you want to stick around order as an Oklahoma lock. City citizen, yeah, uh, you want to make sure and order that. But th from what I have read in sort of the tr some of the trade publications, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> This was actually intended to be a, kind of a stunt menu item from the beginning, so yeah. kind of like the McRib. Okay. You know, the, the McDonald, McDonald's will bring the McRib back every yeah. now and then and you know, cause people to automatically, like, yeah, yes, well, I'm going to go get a McRib. Yeah. yeah. I think this is sort of along those lines, but I'm telling you, naked chicken chalupa, the shell is fried chicken. So I don't it, know, but how thin is the shell? Like, is it a shell? It's the perfect thinness? width. Okay. I'm gonna have to look at Whatever it. that is, it is the perfect width. I don't know how to wrap my mind it around could, this announcement. It's probably maybe a little less than a half centimeter. Okay, okay. If that's, so it's yeah. not it's not too thick. Because when not I think of thick. fried chicken, it's just like It's that's like a much. schnitzel, yeah, they have okay, pounded it out. Schnitzel. Now you're talking and about And then now it's, it's the shell is fried chicken. I mean, the shell is, <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, that this. I don't know if you can do anything more than this. I mean, I think they've really sort of figured it out. This you is know, the peak Taco of Taco Bell does more with experience. five ingredients than you can ever, no. you know, this is, uh, but yeah, this is no. really no. kind of hitting no. <laughs> Was there anything I'm else serious. you wanted to get to before we make our Well, no, this is, this is all, that's all I had. I'm just okay. going to be thinking about that naked chicken chalupa. Great. And, and Taco Bell, the local franchisees, you guys need to rejoin the chamber. Rejoin the chamber. We'll talk more about your food and Nate yeah, will we continue might. to be <laughs> there every Saturday night, I'm sure. So Big news. <laughs> The shell is fried chicken. The shell is fried chicken. So the, in other big news, this is something that's literally hot off the press. Hot we off the have press. not discussed it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But last week, the executive committee of the chamber uh, met, and they have decided that we are free to resume in-person events. Uh, we are still very much in the planning phases of when that will roll out. So you can read more about that in the next edition of The Point, which will come out the first Thursday in June. Correct. But we wanted to make sure and let everyone know that live events are back. We're, We're going to start meeting in person, <laughs> gathering around a table. All that good you know, chamber networking that you like. Hearing in-person speakers. Yes, the networking. And, and all jokes aside, people truly miss this. This yeah, is an integral sure. part of the chamber membership experience. And we definitely recognize that it's been really hard for a lot of people. It's hard to, to make business connections when you can't meet in person. So yeah. we're excited to be able to offer that back again. Our events team is uh, diligently planning about what that, that future will hold, but we anticipate that our first in-person event will be State of Schools. So oh, that's going right. to be August 11th. And you can look in the point next month for more information. We'll have an article detailing all the plans. And we are excited to bring that back to in-person offerings. That's very cool. Oh, I'm excited. Uh, yeah. OK. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for today. So we want to thank you all for joining us. Yeah, thanks for letting us ramble and talk about Sonic <laughs> and Taco Bell and Nate really loving Taco Bell and bowling. This is great. Okay. Yeah. Some <laughs> They have a special gift oh, sometimes. Lord. You gotta really you? watch out. Yeah. You gotta watch out for those That's, sleepwalking bullets. Sometimes they can get violent, but you <laughs> know. Sometimes they can really pull off some int intricate things. That's so, true. Like, like bowling yeah. at almost perfect aim. So, uh, so yeah, if you have feedback for us, the best way to get that to us is just by the old fashioned email, and that is networking at okzchamber.com if you prefer the social media route. Our uh, profiles on social media are generally OKC Chamber. That's right. And always, we appreciate if you like, subscribe, leave a review, give us your comments. Especially if um, it's good. Yes. And share this with people that you may think want to learn more about Oklahoma City because we love talking about it, clearly. That's right. There's, like you said last time, there's always more to talk about. There's always more to talk when about. When it comes to what's going on in Oklahoma City. True. But so. until the next time, uh, we hope that you will stick around, explore Oklahoma City, have a lot of fun out there, and let us know what you're doing. See y'all later. Bye.